All right, what's good, y'all? Now, last night, the Atlanta Hawks just tied a series against the 76ers. And Trey Young put on a clinic last night. When I was watching the game, I think they said he had like 28 and 18 or 19 assists, something like that. He was putting on a clinic. And then Joel Embiid, he had a horrible second half. I know he's hurt, but still, he couldn't buy a bucket. He went like 0 for 12, 0 for 11, something like that. He could not buy a bucket. And the thing is, when you watch that game, Joel Embiid was settling for jumpers way too much. Whole second half, he was taking straight jump shots. Then you get to the end of the game, some reason it goes to his hands. <laughs> they try to win the game. And he smokes a wide, a wide open layup. And he smokes it. Seven feet. Seven one, maybe. Smoking wide open layups. See, he even, he gets that, they win the game. To me, at least. Or maybe he hits three three more shots, they won the game. It's easy stuff like that. Because Joel Embiid was playing bad, but then they were, the 76ers were still up. Like, that's... <laughs> like, the Sixers made too many defensive mistakes, too. Not getting back on defense. Then John Collins hit a three in the corner. That gave them the momentum. That's little stuff like that. Anyways, let's get into this video. Collapse. Well, it's definitely a Philly collapse. That's how I view it. I mean, when I see Trey Young shooting 30% from the field, Bogdanovich shooting 36%, 37% from the field, and they're your two leading scorers for the Atlanta Hawks. To me, it's not about what they did. It's about what the Philadelphia 76ers did to themselves. Joel Embiid is not healthy. We got all of that. But if you're healthy enough to be on a court in the second half, you and I healthy. Exactly what I'm talking about. This man curling off, <laughs> curling to the top of the key, top of the key, pulling for a three. The enough to make one shot out of 12? You go 0 for 12? You averaging at least 15 free? Like even right there, setting the right for a jump shot against Clint Capella. Clint Capella is not that good. He's not that good. All he knows how to do is dunk the ball <laughs> and roll off pick and rolls. That's all he was taught in Houston. Throws a game, you go to the free throw line four times. You seven feet, you seven one, 270, 280. You can't find a way to get to the free throw line. You can't find a way to make one bucket, one bucket, but it's not really. Even right there, he's not even going up aggressive like he wanted to make the layup. Going up looking for the foul. That's why he went 0 for 12. About him, because again, I understand that he is hurt. I totally get that. Here's my issue Tobias Harris, my brother. Tobias Harris shoots, scores 20 points, shoots 8 of 15 from the field, a very respectable 53%. You cannot shoot. All these shots by Joel and be airballing, settling for jump shots. 7 1, 280. No, I'm going to take, take a jump shot. I'm going to take a three. I'm going to take a post fadeaway, <laughs> almost to the three point line. Like, why? You don't need that. You can get that shot any day. Get to the rack first. Because once you start getting to the rack, you get fouled. You go to the free throw line. Knock down them free throws. And then you start shooting the ball. 15 times when you know good and damn well Joel Embiid is not healthy. You're Tobias Harris. You got skills. You can ball. You got to take the ball. I don't want to say. I'm not talking about him. Man, they gave, they gave Joel Embiid the ball. <laughs> You can't blame this on Tobias Harris. He had a good game. Hero ball, the way that Doc Rivers decried, but you got to take the bull by the horn. Seth Curry made a decent amount of his shots. Tobias Harris made a decent amount of his shots, better than a decent amount of shots. You got to take the ball and say, my man is hurt. My big man ain't ready right now. He ain't right right now. Give me the damn ball. But that's still under well and B. Like, look right there. <laughs> He taking a bad shot and looking for the foul call. It's stuff like that. You can't blame Tobias Harris for the shots Joel and B takes. And I'll do what I need to do. We can't have that. Tobias Harris has to be more aggressive. And I said this, Max, last week. Tobias Harris has to be taking 20 to 25 shots a game, especially 
if Embiid is not healthy. If but if he doesn't. Healthy, 76ers, that didn't happen last night. But if he doesn't, that's not a collapse by the Sixers. Look, injury is deciding this whole these whole playoffs, right? We were so nervous about the bubble. There should be an asterisk. Stop it, everybody. The bubble was fine. The best team won. This year, the fears were justified. Short offseason, compressed schedule. What's going to happen? Look at every playoff series. The best player on every team is hurt, right? That's what right. happened. That's what happened to Embiid. He's playing on a torn. Practically. Practically the best player on every team. I'm not going to blame Embiid for having a bad night when he just gave you 39. 40 and 27, and two of those were wins, and one of them should have been one? No, no, it's not on Embiid. It's not on a Sixers. No, I got to go out and beat on his shot selection. That's the only thing I'm coming at him about, going 0 for 12, because you're taking straight jump shots as a big man. Like, dang, you a big man getting the post. <laughs> and he, he has post moves. He's the same person that says he models his game after Hakeem Elijah won. Like, come on, man. Collapse. This is about the Atlanta Hawks and the comeback. It's about Trey Young showing himself again. I, this is one of these amazing star turns, and it's not just like uh, Donovan Mitchell and Jamal Murray were amazing in last year's first round. This is Trey Young series after series showing you greatness in different ways. This time it was up, oh, shots not falling early. What am I going to do? Gets his teammates involved. That's infectious. His team. That's because Trey Young be take, taking some wild threes, bro. <laughs> Dude really think he's uh, pulling from the logo. I, I mean, he hits it sometimes, but it's not like, it's not as high as a clip as a Dame Lillard or a Steph Curry. Mates then pick up on that, and the Hawks are moving the ball the entire game. He didn't shoot it great, but he found another way to have a giant impact on the game and led a comeback down, was it 20-something points? Led a comeback all the way back to win. Was the opportunity there because of Embiid's knee? No doubt. If Embiid's healthy, the Sixers win. He's the Still, the Sixers sort of kept that lead. Like, they was just making dumb mistakes and taking bad shots. I forgot who it is, but it was a white boy on the Sixers. This, this man has seven seconds in the shot clock, and he forced up a three trying to get the foul. No, just pass it back. You got someone open. Best player in this series, but he's not. And you have to figure out a way to get it done when it's your, not your night. And that's what Trey Young did. The Hawks came back. That was the story of this game. Well, I think your point would be far more profound if there wasn't an 18-point deficit that they had to climb out of. If you're the Philadelphia 76ers, why do you lose an 18-point def- uh, lead with a guy that's shooting 30% from the field? And uh, the only people that shot decently, I mean, the, the, your two primary scorers were you, Trey Young, and Bogdanovich. And Bogdanovich shot 37% and you shot 30%. It happened because the Philadelphia 76ers offensively collapsed. Because even though Embiid was a bit hampered because of his injury, and I'm not blaming him per se, I'm saying that you go 0 for 12 on one leg, Embiid could go 3 for 12. On one leg, he could do it because that's how gifted he is. So 0 for 12 in the second half. 0 for 12 taking straight jump shots. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Bro, when you're, when you're shot, this is for Hoopers. This is for Hoopers. They know this. When your shot is off, you go to the basket, man. You, you just, I mean, unless you're like Steph, maybe. But even Steph, he'll go to the basket first to get his warm-ups. You just don't come out the game shooting threes. That's just bad shot selections by, by Joel Embiid. Half is a bit alarming, but more than that is the fact that a guy like Tobias Harris shooting decently from the field, what's up with the passiveness? Why oh. is Embiid? That's what I'm talking Like, right there, right there, right there. This man did an amazing pump fake. Went to the basket like he was chilling. <laughs> like, no, try to dunk on him. Oh, okay, you're injured. You're injured. But don't just try to just throw up something and hope for the foul. Go with the layup as if you're trying to make it. Taking no shots instead of you when nah, you look at your receiver. teammate and you know he's not near 100%. Why did that happen? 
And that's the point of it all. You well, can't let that happen when you're playing the game of basketball and you're looking at your teammate and he's hobbled. You got to know that's your moment to step up and say, yo, coach, fellas, I got this. Come to me, especially since he wasn't struggling and he was making shots and Seth Curry was making shots. <sighs> Anyways, I'm putting on Joel Embiid by shot selection. And then the Sixers defense, man. I don't think that's Tobias Harris's fault. He had a good game, eight for fifteen. Ben Simmons had a decent game. He he almost had a triple double. He had like eleven, twelve, and nine, something like that. But that was a game. Seventy six ers sort of went up three one, but now it's tied two two. You know, you know, you know what? Maybe Doc Rivers has PTSD from from the bubble, then being up three one against the Nuggets. And blowing that lead. Blowing that lead easily. But anyways, I think I think the Sixers are gonna win. I saw the Sixers beating the Hawks in six. But if Trey Young manages to get a dub next game, <laughs> that might be wraps for the 76ers. Anyways, I sit on this one. Peace. <laughs>